Hey guys, and welcome to Life with Aprons. Did you know that you could take regular ground beef and turn it into beef jerky? I'm gonna show you how. One of my favorite things to do is to make beef jerky. I have one particular child who is not fond of eating meat all the time, but he loves beef jerky. So I like to have it on hand for him, as well as if we're going out somewhere, we try our best to not stop and get any food because let's be honest, the food that is provided, fast food, convenience stores, all of that is filled with junk. So I wanna make sure that I have a healthy uh, meal or a healthy snack for my kids to eat when we're on the road. And one of the things that I love to bring is beef jerky. Sometimes I'll pack a lunch with uh, sliced cheese, beef jerky, and a hunk of sourdough bread, maybe some fruit, and that's our lunch. And that keeps us from having to stop at these places and just really fill our body with a bunch of junk. I wanna show you today how you can turn ground beef into beef jerky. A lot of people make beef jerky by using strips of meat, uh, when we get a half a cow, we have a ton of ground beef. So I like to take that ground beef and make that into beef jerky. This recipe that I have is adapted from a book that I've mentioned before, and I'll put a link in the description, but it's called So Easy to Preserve. It is my handbook for preserving all things. I have used and used this book for years it's got great recipes in it. It's got times for canning, uh, from pressure canning to hot water baths. It's got dehydrating stuff in it. Uh, really a great source for you to have in your library. I highly recommend it. In the book, there is a marinade that you can use to make jerky. I've taken this marinade and I've kind of adapted it a little bit to fit our needs better. And that's the recipe I'm showing you today. The first thing you're gonna need is your ground beef. So I have two packages of ground beef. This is two pounds. This recipe can be used for one and a half to two pounds of ground beef. So all I'm gonna do is just open this up and pour it right into the bowl. Got our ground beef into the bowl. And now I'm just gonna start adding my seasonings. Let's talk about what we're putting into the marinade for the jerky. The recipe calls for soy sauce. I don't like to use soy sauce. I use liquid aminos. That's the substitute that I use for this recipe. And I am going to use a fourth of a cup of the liquid aminos. This is an eighth of a cup, so I'm just gonna do two of these. There we go, okay. The next thing that I am going to add is Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> I've always had trouble saying that, Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> you want to add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Perfect. Okay. Now we're going to add our salt, garlic powder, and onion. I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt. And again, like with every recipe I say, you can adjust this to your taste. Maybe you want it a little saltier. Maybe you want it to have a little more garlic in it. Maybe a little more pepper. You can adjust it. I would first start with the standard recipe that I'm giving you and then see how that goes and then begin to adjust it to fit your own family. We are going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay. And a half a teaspoon of onion powder or I use onion flakes. So because I use flakes, I'm gonna do a big heaping spoon of that. And the last thing we're gonna add is the pepper. You want a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. I kind of eyeball what a fourth of a teaspoon would be and that pretty much looks like it. <laughs> all right, the last thing you're gonna do is just mix it all together with your hands. You want to make sure that everything is combined and sitting in this marinade. Now, when it is finished being combined, 
I'm going to put a plate over this. You just want to cover your container and you're going to stick it in the fridge for 24 hours. Once the 24 hours is up, that gives it enough time to really soak in that marinade. Then we are going to begin making our jerky. Okay, everything's combined. I'm going to take this, I'm going to stick it in the fridge, and we're going to come back in 24 hours and finish our jerky. All right, my ground beef has been sitting in the refrigerator for about 24 hours and it is ready to be turned into jerky. How do we turn ground beef into jerky? Well, this contraption right here is what makes it all happen. This is called a jerky gun and I'm gonna show you how it works. You have what's like a gun, you have a trigger. This is what the ground beef goes into and you also have these attachments. My gun came with three attachments, two smaller slotted openings, one big slotted opening, and then one that turns them into round pieces, kind of like a Slim Jim, but a lot healthier. So I am going to use the rounded attachment. I'm just gonna put it on the top, screw it on, and I'm gonna begin stuffing my ground beef mixture into the container. You wanna fill it all the way up with this ground beef mixture. And as you can see, my dogs have smelled the meat <laughs> and they have come over. All right, that is pretty good. I'm going to screw it on to this gun and let me dry my hands off. It can get a little slippery. And I'm gonna begin to make long logs on this dehydrating tray because it's going to go into the dehydrator in order for it to become the jerky. This is gonna mold it into the shape that you want it. So all I do is I get it ready it's just pressing everything together for it to come out, okay? And then you just begin pressing it and it makes a nice long line. And I like to do mine in long lines and then piece it up later. Now I'm gonna continue making these lines and then they'll be ready to go into the dehydrator. my dehydrator tray. I have a lot more filling in my bowl, so I'm going to get more dehydrator trays and keep filling up the trays. I want to make a quick note about the dehydrator. I put my beef jerky in the dehydrator at 145 degrees and I set the timer for eight to 10 hours. Sometimes it takes eight hours, sometimes it takes 10 hours. You wanna make sure that you err on the side of less than more time, because if you put it in there for too long, it's gonna get dried out and it's just not gonna taste as good. You want it to be dry, but not too dry. Okay, the dehydrator is finished. These were in there for close to 10 hours and they are done. The only thing left to do is to store them. Now, how would you store them? You could put them in a plastic bag. I try to stay away from plastic as much as possible. I have a glass jar that I use, and all I do is pop them in the glass jar, and they might last about a week in my house, and then the jar is pretty much empty, but it gives it a nice place to store it. I stick it on my shelf, it looks nice. And I used different sizes. I have some kids who like the round sizes, like this one here. And then I have some kids who like the flat, small sizes. And then I have some kids who like the 
flat, large sizes. It really just depends on you. You can use whatever size that you would like. That's the beauty of the jerky gun is that it has those different hookups to go on there so that you can choose what you would like. It really is very similar to a Slim Jim in the look of it, but <laughs> Definitely not in the quality of ingredients. You are going to have the best quality when you make your jerky at home. You get to control the ingredients and you also get to control the kind of meat you put into it. My local farmer has the cows out near his house. I'm able to go see the cows. I have a relationship with that local farmer until we are able to butcher our own cows. This is a great setup for us, and I know exactly where the meat is coming from. I also know what those cows are eating. You're going to get the best jerky possible by making it at home, controlling the ingredients, and sourcing your meat locally, if not from your farm. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more great content.